I'd like to examine stupas uh, in terms of the comparative method. The comparative method is not without flaws, but it has been especially productive in discovering temple typology across different traditions. This study uses as a template key elements identified by John Lundquist in his temple typology of the ancient Near East. Lundquist's initial typology addresses exclusively the ancient Near East, although he refers elsewhere to the applicability of adapting this typology across the wider cultural spectrum. By filling in only tersely elements of Lundquist's typology with examples from Southeast Asia, it is hoped that the universality of the temple as a symbol will be reinforced not just as an expression of sacred space in the ancient Near East, but throughout the world. It is also hoped that this examination will be the impetus for future study and appreciation of the marvelous examples of sacred space in Southeast Asia. And I'm going to grab my computer. seven elements are just some of many elements that Lundquist has identified as being universal in temple typology in the ancient Near East. And I'd like to apply uh, seven of them as briefly as possible to the stupa, the symbol of sacred space in Southeast Asia. First, the temple is oriented toward the four world regions or cardinal directions. Second, the temple is the architectural embodiment of the cosmic mountain. Third, the temple is associated with the tree of life. Fourth, the temple is associated with the moment of creation. Fifth, the temple is built on separate, sacral, set-apart space. Sixth, the temple is the omphalos, or navel, that bridges heaven and earth. And finally, seventh, the temple represents successive ascension into heaven. Uh, beginning with orientation, the stupa represents, uh, is oriented toward the four regions or common directions. According to Hindu, man Hindu manuscripts on constructing sacred space, the silapastras, the ritual for constructing a stupa or a temple or other building, uh, begins by erecting a nomo or a sundown staff in the ground. Uh, this sacred center is then measured, the shadows of this are measured by casting uh, the different shadows in the morning and the evening are measured, and thus a parallel east-west axis is measured. Once the east-west axis is measured, the perpendicular north-south is then demarcated from this bearing, and thus the sacred center of the stupa is established. So every construction of houses, uh, significantly significant houses, buildings, or anything is initiated in this fashion. In this way, stupas are oriented toward the four uh, directions. Uh, stupas represent a cosmic mountain. Scholar Paul Moose, whose extensive study of Borobudur in Indonesia is filled with insight on the temple typology, says, he has established beyond reasonable doubt that every domical stupa implicitly contains the cosmic mountain within The curve of the dome stands a hidden Mount Meru. Mount Meru is the Hindu mountain of creation. It's the initial and holy and sacred mountain. It is akin to, um, for instance, Mount Moriah in the Jewish tradition. Uh, the temple is the Axis Mundi. Mount Meru is surrounded by seven concentric mountain bases and rises out of the primordial waters of chaos. Sometimes the stupa uh, represents the mountain, and it's set on a larger base, and this base uh, forms the entire structure of the base of the mountain, and the dome of the stupa represents the crown of the mountain. Uh, the stupa represents the tree of life, emerging from the pillar of heaven, which is the supernal tree of life, whose branches are layered in the heavens. This tree represents the Malaka tree of Hinduism, in whose branches dwell Rama, Vishnu, and Shiva. The fruit of this tree sustains the gods, and provides them with eternal sustenance. Um, at the top of each stupa, there is an umbrella, a parasol, or a tree-like symbol, a conical symbol, and all these conical symbols represent the tree of life that's at the culmination of the sacred mountain. Um, creation. The actual physical construction of the stupa flows from the newly demarcated sacred center and embodies the idea of the primary moment of the creation of the universe. This initial orientation toward the cardinal direction mirrors a Buddhist tradition that combines sacred space and orientation. As soon as he was born, the Bodhisattva planted his feet firmly in the ground and turning to the north, took seven strides, reached the pole and cried, it is I who am at the top of the world. It is I who am the firstborn of the world. The stupa is the architectural embodiment of the mountain at the top of the world, but also the Buddha himself. And so its creation is synonymous with his birth. At this event, Eliade comments, by gaining the summit of the cosmos, Buddha becomes <coughs> contemporaneous with the beginning of the world. Every construction, therefore, and every contact with the center involves doing away with profane time entering into the mythical illude tempest of creation. The creation of the stupa, then, is the creation of the world. 
Its careful orientation and mountain form represent the center of creation. The summit of the stupa is like the summit that the Buddha climbed upon his birth. By constructing a stupa, the sacred moment of conception of the universe and of the Buddha is relived indefinitely. Uh, the stupa represents sacral space. From the demarcation of the sacred center, the circle and the square radiate, and these forms are marked off to separate the newly consecrated space, both of the stupa and surrounding it, from the profane space within. The demarcation of space prior to construction of the architectural enterprise is similar for virtually all notions of sacred space. Thus, the stupa's geomantic orientation is determined in the same way that a whole city is, or the way a small house is. Angkor Wat in Cambodia is an example of the separation between sacred and profane space. If you're aware of Angkor Wat, it's, uh, it's uh, the largest example of a stupa. Uh, it's one of the largest examples of a stupa, it's the most famous. And it's a complex that houses uh, an elaborate stupa in the center in a circular fashion and around it is squared off. Uh, this squared off complex uh, represents the ordered space radiating from, radiating from the center of the stupa, while profane chaotic space without is represented by the waterworks of the boat that surround the structure. The stupa represents the envelopes, or the navel of the universe. It is the conduit between heaven and earth, the path that divine beings ascend and descend from, and where the mythic hero achieves that both Eliade says that the Omphalos is sacred because it stands at the center of the world and consequently at the point of junction between the three cosmic zones. Anything embodying the center or representing it can be considered a hierophany. And so there's a base of the stupa, there's a dome, and then there's a, a pillar of structure before the umbrella. The base represents earth, the dome represents the navel of the universe, the Omphalos, and the little pillar structure represents the heaven and the cosmos. And uh, the Omphalos then represents the conduit where heavenly beings travel and also the liminal space between heaven and earth. Uh, the stupa represents ascension. In the sacred geometry of the stupa, the central axis of the world is the pathway of liberation. For Hindus and Buddhists, the spiritual journey of life is akin to an ascension of the axis of the world. And so the central axis of the stupa both represent linear, linearly uh, points the mind of uh, the observer towards the uh, ascent, the spiritual journey of both Buddhism and Hinduism that culminate in, in the uh, journey to the heavens. Uh, Boro Budor, which is amazing, and I have amazing slides of, is the most elaborate stupa in the world. It's the quintessential example of successive ascension. Uh, Boro Budor is uh, built in Java in Indonesia, and it's a massive structure that is both circle, circular and square, and the initiates uh, ascend the structure both inwardly and upwardly. And in each different station, they're taught mythological truths about uh, Buddhism, and they uh, perform rituals that indicate the, uh, the difficult journey of this life, and finally ascend and uh, imitate the moment of nirvana or apotheosis. Uh, to wrap up, I promise this was much more interesting than slides. Thank you for being relatively attentive. Uh, <laughs> In conclusion, these seven aspects of temple typology, uh, and I'll read them again. The stupa is oriented toward the four world regions. The stupa is the architectural embodiment of the cosmic mountain. The stupa is associated with the tree of life, that it's associated with the moment of creation, that it's associated with a separate, sacral, set apart space, that it's associated with the umphalos or navel that bridges heaven and earth, and that it's associated with successive ascension into heaven. Our illustrations of nature of temple technology. The sacred space, space of Southeast Asia reflects in all these ways and many more that can be discussed a universal language of Hierophany. This language is trans